Welcome back to the Mastering Runeterra podcast with Jay and Bay, the number one source for competitive legends of Runeterra news and information. If you're looking for the best decks to play right now, right now. be sure to check us out on Twitter at Master Runeterra or in our Discord. And if you want to take the next step in leveling up your game, check out our Runeterra team on Patreon where we do weekly learning calls and one-on-one coaching. Now strap in and grab yourself some Boro snacks because we are about to start Mastering Runeterra. Welcome back, everyone, to the Mastering Runeterra show with Jay and Bay. We've got a fantastic show for you today. Um, before we get into everything, though, I just want to thank all of our subscribers over on MasteringUterra.com, all of our patrons, patrons on Patreon. Yes. Uh, thank you guys so much for supporting us. Uh, it means the world to us. It, it helps us do, um, you know, what we love to do, which is make all this awesome content for you guys and play a bunch of uh, Runeterra. Uh, and speaking of which, also making awesome tools for you guys to use. The Best of Three Band Helper is now up and running. Um, it does not crash. It does not get overloaded. Thumbs up. Uh, the oh, matchup grid is also on it. Last time, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, we've we've upgraded. We've upgraded the servers. We've like upgraded the back end, and so we had a bunch. We had hundreds of people using it for the seasonals work totally fine um it will now have up-to-date information also because we just launched it like a few weeks ago so it's only been scraping info for like three weeks or something uh but now it'll have a lot more data to you know pull information from it'll have a lot more games um and then we have the tier list going as well and the leaderboard where you can see the deck list of people that are crushing it on the leaderboard like our boy kever um so again thank you guys so much it means the world to us i hope you guys all enjoyed our road to seasonal tournaments as well uh that was super fun um i know multiple people from uh, our discord were you know really loved them and uh who was it shoot i forget their name one of our patrons made top 32 and it was a snipe cross no one of our patrons made top 32 and uh they thanked us very much for the the seasonals road to seasonals tournaments so there was a, a lot of help for them um i had a blast playing them they're great uh and speaking of which real quick we are having a tournament again with gg tour i believe on june the 4th boop 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 yeah so all the news all the news are, new cards will come out and then uh same thing free to enter 500 uh prize pool come out some fun play new cards enjoy yourselves okay with all that out of the way bay what are you say, big guy? Good to have you back. It's nice to be back. Yeah, it's been a bit. It's been a bit. Yeah. Yeah. The seasons didn't feel the same without you. I was telling you before we started recording. It was, uh, I don't know. You're, I mean, you're a staple in the community. You're obviously, you know, my other half in Mastering and Terra. Mm-hmm. Not having you, even just like uh, after I was done playing, not having like your stream to go check in on and like see what was going on. We had a Kato. Shout out to Kato. Um, but yeah, it felt it felt like something was missing. Um, we haven't spoke too much since you've been back, so I'm really excited to hear yeah. how your trip went and what it was what it was like. Yeah, it was fun. It was really nice. Uh, so flew to New Jersey, uh, landed, and it was really cool because I mean you've been you've been to like a Grand Prix and like a Pro Tour or whatever, like you know what it's like. Um, so when you show up to your hotel and you walk out and the lobby. Because they had like a big seating area. It was one of those that was like a circular hotel where all the rooms were on the outside. And then the inside is just like a big pretend outside, right? We have like all the yeah. seating and everything and like restaurants. I saw some and just, I saw some photos. Yeah, every table is just flesh and blood. <laughs> every single table. They're just jamming games at all hours of the day. And then at night, everyone's jamming games, but also they're drunk. <laughs> and it was just, a, it was a cool atmosphere. Uh, and then you go the the night before, so Thursday night, the night before the tournament starts, we have a banquet where we like show up to the center, but they have all these tables set out and like so many different like food things and like candles and stuff. The food looked Q&A. bomb. Yeah, it, it was super really good. Yeah. Yeah, gourmet. It outdid my expectations by like, like a lot, <laughs> like a lot. Um, they had a Q and A with James White who made the game. Um, just really like really cool. And then, yeah, um, got up to play the next day, signed up, and um, I played Bravo Star of the Show in the Pro Tour. Um, oh, you brought, who, you brought Bravos. I brought Bravo, yeah. I decided to bring Bravo. Um, okay. He is a little more RNG 
than the other champs, but like easily the strongest thing you could be doing. Um, yeah, was so, it four or five copies in the top eight, top eight? Yeah, it was a lot. It was like four or five. He is now living legend, so he is like he hit living legend. So after like when the next set comes out, he will retire. Um, yeah, he's, he's basically first. Big. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, um, he is the first to hit living legend status which is like a hall of fame. And then they get banned. A retired sounds nicer though. Um, yeah. It sounds so much nicer. Yeah. So he's the first one to, <laughs> yeah, he, they're living in a nice farm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, brought him. Um, it was luck was not with me that day. You know, he needs, hmm. he needs to hit, um, hit his thing. And I did not hit the thing very often. I ran into some bad matchups and it was what it was. I needed to four and three to day two. And I three and four, um, I was pretty happy to three and four though. I didn't want to day two and squeak in uh, because instead of playing day two at like a record where I wouldn't make top eight, instead I could just go play them. The calling, which is like the grand prix the next day uh-huh. and have a brand new record and have fun. I, I don't like Bravo. I don't like him at all. It'd be like, yeah, if you, if ready, you went yeah. back, would you, would you change your deck or do you feel like it was still the right decision? You just ran bad. I think it was the right decision. And I ran bad. But going back, I would change my deck just so I could play something I enjoy more. It would be like me. Mm. It would be like if you get, I'm at Worlds in Runeterra, but you only get to play one deck, and I pick Pantheon Yumi. That's what it's like. Pirates. I don't like to play Pantheon Yumi, but it's really, really, really good, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. so is it the right choice? Probably, you know, or something like that. But like, is it the right choice? Given for your me? given your opponents, do you think you would have done better if you brought like Chain? Um. Yeah, probably. Probably. I think the level of play was very high. Yeah, I think I, I was better than the average. Makes me sound like an ass, but it's like not by a ton. I am not I am not an incredibly good flesh and blood player. Not I'm yet. not world class. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. I I'm not I feel like that I I feel like if someone says, "Oh, I'm not very good at this game." what that means is like they're not very good at this game but when i say i'm not very good at this game what it means is i'm not like top 10 right <laughs> like um yeah i'm not an incredibly good flesh and player if you put the 50 best players in the world in a room i'm not in that room um yet and i knew it going into it um and i'm not really used to that feeling um so uh, welcome yeah <laughs> um but yeah the cool thing was is um there's a, a other hero sorry for the people who don't watch flesh and blood you could skip ahead to the time stamp if you don't the, the next time stamp if you don't want to hear about all this um there's a hero named kano he's my favorite hero he's the reason i started playing the game he's a wizard he's very fragile and he's supposed to play on your opponent's turn as well as his own he's the only hero that does that um and he is not good in classic constructed he's never once been good in classic constructed but I love playing Kano. So I left him at home. I left all my Kano cards at home because I knew if I brought him, I would YOLO Kano the day before the Pro Tour. <laughs> right? I would be the night okay. before the Pro Tour and I'd be like, I don't want to play Starvo. I'm just going to fucking play Kano and have a blast. And I knew I would do that. So I left him at home. Seven people brought Kano. Two top eighted. Two Ooh. missed a winning into the top eight. So, like, the best conversion rate possible. Oh, yeah, al- like, almost one of the best conversion rates ever. Right? Like, that's I think you're, nuts. I think you're bobbling your mic, just FYI. No, it's just I like, it's going, boop, boop, boop. I think, you're, I think you're touching it. Oh, I'm hitting it? I am hitting it. That's my bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, just an insane conversion rate. People brought Kano, and mm. no one was ready, and they stomped through the field. Um, so, is this literally just like a, like a Pirates is bad, Pirates is always bad, just everyone brought Pantheon, and you just, like, sliced right through them kind of thing? Like, one of those situations? Kind of. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Um, is it good against Starvo? Yes. So the thing with Kano is he can play at instant speed, which is really good against some of Starvo's hit effects that like tax your hand because you just go, hold on, in response. Boom, 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 right? But what's really important okay. about Kano is Kano's damage can't be blocked by standard means. It has to be blocked by Arcane Barrier because he only does Arcane damage. Arcane Barrier is on your equipment. You need to bring specialized anti-magic equipment to deal with Kano. And then Arcane Barrier costs resources, not cards, mana, right? Like mana. Um, okay. So if your opponent only brings 
one or zero arcane barrier, Kano gets free reign. He knows all his stuff's going to hit. And so what they do is they go, okay, block a little bit, deal some damage. 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 Or you put lethal on the stack, hold on, dump everything, right? Kill you. That's that's how Kano plays. It's on like turn three, four, sometimes five. You like chip, 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 chip. And then you sit there and try to solve a puzzle. And I love it. I love it. I live for it. Um, Interesting. And so, yeah, if you have like Arcane Barrier 2 or 3, then what happens is your opponent will present, they'll like, they'll be able to stop kind of the key spells in Kano, which is like things that add on more damage. They can like slow you down. Um, And then on their go off turn, they can, I mean, on the lethal turn, they can present lethal and still have two cards in their hand with, you know, two blues, so six resources, and they can stop six damage over the course of your trying to go off which really messes up your math it makes it like so much more difficult so the more arcane Hmm. barrier your opponent has the harder it is for kano also the faster they can present lethal with arcane barrier the harder it gets um and just nobody brought arcane barrier like yeah because everyone just assumed that no one was going to bring Kano. No one's going to bring Kano, and the other heroes that deal arcane damage were, it was often more efficient to bring something else. So you just wouldn't uh-huh. bring it. Or you'd bring one, right? And so if you if yeah. you went back, would you try it? Would you bring Kano? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, brought Kano. I played Super Kano in the calling. And it... Oh, yeah. So, okay, let's get to that then. How did, yeah, yeah, how did, yeah. The, so, how did the calling go? So I was watching the, the same, same format. Is this the same format? Yes, except I need a seven and two. But it's the same format. So I'm going, okay. does anybody have Kano that I can borrow? Because mm-hmm. I didn't bring mine. <laughs> um, and so I was like, does anybody have Kano? And everyone's like, no, no one just brings Kano because you won't play Kano. And you can't like, you can't just pick up Kano. Kano is probably the most difficult deck I've ever played in any card game. And I don't think it's close. Huh. I don't even think it's wow. remotely close. I think Legacy Storm is like infinitely easier. Um because Kano introduces quite a bit of randomness, but in a okay. way that you can mitigate a lot if you're really good. And so the hard part about Kano is mitigating that randomness and planning for it. Um, and so I had a, a, a friend um, who did bring Kano, but he was like, hold on. I want to try to learn Kano so I can play him tomorrow. And I was like, okay, do you want to pull an all-nighter? I'll come over and I'll teach you how to play this deck. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm just going to practice it for like two hours. It'll be fine. <laughs> and so he practiced it for two hours, hits me up and says, there's no fucking way I'm playing that deck. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> and I was like, can I play it? And he's like, yeah. And I went, yes. And so it's like, you know, midnight. I don't have a list submitted. I'm like, do you have these cards? <laughs> and then, yeah, I show up to the venue, grab the deck, look through it, register what was given to me and play in the calling. And I had so much fun. So much. And fun. how did it go? It went, it went well. Um, I went, so I started off two and zero, and then I ran into people who saw the pro tour and just packed the hate. Oh, not no. like, a, not like a little hate, like the most possible you could have, <laughs> like all of it. Like I sat down for one of my opponents and before you sideboard, you announce I'm playing Kano, right? You sit, you tell each other what hero you have and then you sideboard. Right. And so I say, they go, I'm playing bravo and i said i'm playing kano and they went oh i'm ready for you and i was like oh (laughs) no and they sub out their entire equipment slot except one and bring in just like solely anti-kano card solely anti-kano card solely anti-kano card solely anti-kano card and they just flipped it over and i was like oh i think i did four points of damage to them the entire game out of 40 life it was miserable yeah and then so how, then, how did it yeah. how did it end up on the day then i two and three because i ran into that twice and then just kind of like mm. stopped um but uh i i have never had so much fun while losing in my life like i had a blast. yeah that's cool that's yeah, nice. that's yeah, and that's that's, so that's so important that's one of the problems mm-hmm. i've been having with like i don't know some of the games and stuff with like runeterra and stuff i'm just like not having fun and uh that's one of the things that i definitely want to change going into the seasonal I definitely want to try and rather than just playing like the three good decks, which tends to be boring or can be, um, I want to try and attack the format a little bit more and okay. come at it with some spice. I want to try. Uh, I think what I want to do is like <clears throat> not exactly one trick, but try to like, you know, really master some decks, like maybe sure. thralls, yeah. 
Thralls looking yeah. kind of hot. I like playing Thralls. Something like that. Something that's a little bit, a little bit off meta, but still very good. And if you master it, like you're, you know, you're going to be a, an issue for some people. And uh, and also just be like, have more fun. Just have it's like, this is my thing that I do. I try to just keep getting better and better and better at it, rather than just being like, I don't know, the day before, what's the best shit? It's that I guess, uh, which is not really what I did actually. I I I, I put in a decent amount of time this the last week. Um, not like a crazy amount or anything, but like I was on uh, a Thelios and scouts until we had zigs yeah um we're, do we so want to fully up and... transition to seasonal talk or do we want to wrap up the little bit and then... sorry did you have more did you have more oh yeah sorry i didn't i i should have said that um i just wanted i just wanted to fully go over what happened the trip because some other cool stuff happened um, oh yeah by all yeah. means well, uh, we're here to talk about me right like i'm i'm of course this is the Bay me. show yeah that's that, right yes um uh so saturday night i got to go out with a uh, blevin's puffball panda and jay sensational oh yeah that's um, right blevins stayed like blevins and i stayed in the same room but uh yeah we all got to go out had a bunch of drinks uh ate some food had some ramen it was like super fun um we ended up staying out to like 3 a.m and then Fuck the yeah. next day they came to the convention and Place learned how to play yeah so i was we were like here buy these like blitz decks they're starter decks basically explain the mechanics they played like one game and they're like, got oh, okay. multiple people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're like, oh, okay. I understand these very basic mechanics, kind of. And I was like, cool, time to enter a tournament. <laughs> so we went and <laughs> entered a draft. And I was like, it'll be fine. And yeah, we had we had a ton of fun. And then um one of the vendors actually was really cool because uh the one we bought the blitz decks from, um we were asking about like the power level of like the dual decks versus the blitz decks, not really important. Um, uh, and then I was like, yeah, because, you know, I'm just getting them into the game. They're just starting. And he was like, okay, cool. So we buy the Blitz decks. And then he comes over to our table and gives us an entire booster box and says, welcome to the game. So what? that was sick. Yeah. And then we went back to the hotel later that night and drafted the box, obviously. Um, obviously. And yeah, it was just it was just an incredible weekend. It was so much fun. That's sick. That's so awesome. It mm-hmm. was a good time. Yep. Um, that's it. That's That's all. I had to throw that part in there, though. No, no, that's that's great, man. I'm so I'm so jealous. I can't wait to go to like some sort of meetup and um, you know, meet LOR people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can't Finally, wait to go to Flesh right. and Water Magic and meet my <laughs> LOR peeps. Um which is yeah, I don't know, there's magic stuff coming up, which is kind of cool. Kind of excited for that. But um so yeah, so what do you think on your flesh and blood journey journey really quick to wrap it up? Are you gonna if you qualify for France, you gotta go, right? I gotta go. I've never been to France. Yeah. So, yeah, at that'll the be worst, over the it's next a fucking time. vacation to France, right? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, that'll be over the next three weeks. I will find out whether or not I qualify. I have to play in some tournaments and try to win again. Uh, it happened before, but getting first is like hard, right? It is. Yeah, straight first like, is tough. I could, I could, I would bet a lot of money. I will top eight, two of the three, right? But I yeah. wouldn't be willing to put any money on the line about first. Yeah, it's good spots. Anything could happen. It's two to, one, two to one. I give yeah, you two to yeah. one. Oh wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's better than I would give myself. Um, but yeah, yeah. If I go, if I qualify for France, I will absolutely go. The Pro Tour was such a great time, and yeah, I'd love to go on a vacation again to Europe. Was there any other cool stuff happening uh, at the Pro Tour? Yes, they had a cosplay contest. That was awesome. Cool. Um, so yeah, they just had like a bunch of people dressed up in cosplay on Saturday. And then during the time, which was like 1, 2 p.m. or something, they all would just kind of walk around the conventions. You're just like looking around and you're seeing everybody cosplayed as the characters in the game and stuff. And then they would walk past the judges and the judges would obviously judge them. There was a winner and stuff. And that was really cool. Um, They did an alpha draft. Because like if you played any TCG, you know that the alpha box is worth a lot of money once the game gets off the ground. And so they're all drafting like it was invitation only. And they're all drafting with like the gloves on. (laughs) With the gloves and yeah. stuff, yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, it was, it was a, a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was a really cool event. I so I, I bring it up because like I noticed the spread that they had, like the whole like thing, which was like that's like way better than we've got at Magic all the time. Man, I remember one time Pro Tour Hollywood. I'm in line, the buffet. I get to the front. I get there, like there's no more t-shirts. Like okay, fuck, who cares? I get to the food. They're like there's no more food. Like I see the guy in front of me taking like the last piece of roast beef or whatever. Like I was like, huh. hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, and I always wondered though, in between rounds, why don't you have cool shit going on? You know, like if you go to like a, I don't know, like a, like an event, like a PAX or like some yeah, yeah. some sort of thing, 
there's like cool stuff like why do you just have like what if you had like i don't know like some like fucking nintendo's hooked up or like a movie playing or yeah. or some highlights of like old like the old like vintage magic you know from like yeah. the 90s pro tours or stuff that like most people have never seen even me um <clears throat> just something some like cool stuff to do and there's so much monotony and downtime in between rounds um so i was curious if flesh and blood had like maybe like looked yeah, into that really. a little bit uh, whatever. but i i haven't really been worried about it because like i always have people to talk to you know someone yeah also it's first pro tour right so much excitement and buzz and like yeah it's dope yeah. okay let's, let's get into repair. Repair seasonals. Now. tell me about your seasonals uh yeah so yeah, i was like i was like generally prepared i was gonna be on um Aphelios, scouts and probably um ziggs talia was the deck i played the most seems like a strong lineup. um yeah and i was trying to think if i should maybe swap it out for pantheon which is obviously very good but like i kind of played it a lot and i didn't have a bunch of success with it when i was playing it um and then um and then like morning of i saw the like hey this doesn't count for worlds anymore and i was like i don't give a fuck i was like just done I just didn't care anymore. I was like, oh, cool. I can spend my whole day and then maybe another day to like potentially make $10,000, but really never making $10,000. Let's be real. It's fucking mm -hmm. one in a thousand people. So like, or I could just do anything else with my two days. So I was like, whatever. I was like, uh, there was this other Fey deck that Kevin ended up playing that M Tux, uh was talking about. The Tristana Timo one? The Tristana, yeah. And so crazy. I was just like, yeah, I don't think it was actually that good though. Um, there was like some other version stuff, just mostly because tristana and timo were both kind of like eh. like yeah, Timo's like, kind of a dookie champion timo was like oh yeah i'd almost rather just not play timo and just play something else yeah, but anyways playing... i was like you know what <clears throat> i never would have just jammed in another deck i know like i would have been scared too um because like seasonal points are important all this stuff right i would have been taking the safe pick um i won the first two games they're good like two rounds sorry they're really good and then round three i uh my darling girlfriend who always for some reason insists on when she makes me food i have to have it like just like now i can't wait in the kitchen mm -hmm. uh i'm making excuses but she put it on my desk and i was afraid that the beagle would get it so i put it on my lap and then i got hungry so i started eating it <laughs> and I'm, I'm playing a game where i'm like i'm pretty sure i'm winning pretty sure i got this game locked up it's oh. uh i'm on a failure so i'm playing against um vic uh viego Stream of yeah. Diego. Okay. And uh and like, you know, I got some stuff attached and I'm just smashing them. They've already used a quicksand and like some other stuff. I'm like, I'm winning the race. It's good to go. They it comes to a point where they all attack. I'm six wide. I have 20 health. And then I died. So uh I had to figure out some math because Diego was gonna flip. So I just kinda I was I had to figure out, it's like, okay, one block here, and I was figuring out how to like do it so that Diego doesn't flip and then I can still just kill them on my turn. And uh my hands are all kind of like messy and greasy and gross and uh i'm like kind of like i'm sorry running out of time but i think i still have lots of time right like i should have lots of time and so i'm like okay maybe i move a thing up move a thing back and then it turns out i'm on like the fast timer or whatever. <laughs> and it just like runs you, out and it just yep. whoosh, it's like yep. literally two seconds i'm like <laughs> and i'm like trying to with my messy fucking hands trying to like grab my mouse and like quickly just <laughs> throw something in front of viego and i just boom take 20 20 20 and die from 20 winning a game and then after that i was like all right i'm out of here pretty yeah i was pretty fucking pissed um to be fair i think i was was i down a game i might have been down a game at that mm. point in the match or whatever and then everyone else had all the disconnect issues or whatever and then i was like should i even just keep playing i was like kind of i was like i got i got other shit i could be doing right now on my saturdays yeah. uh but i played one more round and i think i lost fairly to some ag aggressive slanted stuff going on um i probably didn't play particularly well and i was just like eh, i felt kind of dejected it was just sort of over it and um and uh yeah didn't have i was glad though honestly i was sort of glad that it didn't count for seasonal points and i could just kind of like wash it away and just be yeah. like okay redo um and going forward i um there's a few things there's two big things that were on my mind one that was curious of one everyone was afraid of aggro They're like oh no what about aggro oh no and i'm terror? like i'm pretty sure every yeah. season everyone's afraid of aggro and then it never really performs like it'll show up but it never really performs yeah, sure someone enough will do well on it but like it never does well a hundred or 120 people brought pirates one of them made top 32 terrible conversion yeah. rate yeah terrible conversion rate 
and I'm and like historically it kind of always has been, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I mean, and uh, Aphelios. Cr- the other thing was how fast does information travel? Because Aphelios hit the scene about a week before seasonals is when it started popping off again. Like it, it, it like came out really a long time ago. popping off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like Drizzloff came out with it. Everyone kind of tried it, put it back down. And then a week before, it was like, oh, hey, this deck kind of beats everything right now. Um, and I was wondering, like, just how popular will it be? Because you you could be pretty good in the deck. Like, the other um, Aphelios decks were pretty good into it. Like, mm. the P&Z like version, the for instance, which is, which is also a very good deck on its yeah. own. Um, and so this is one of the things I was really curious about. Because especially, like, the winner's metagame is something we don't talk about a lot in LOR. And this is in Magic, you talk about it all the time, that there's the metagame on day one of a Pro Tour, probably the same in Fab, uh, will be like, you know, pretty wide open. There's a lot of stuff. But when you get to day two, there's the winner's metagame. And now in, in seasonals, this would be like rounds five or six onward, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, or six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, we'll say. Um, so very quickly, like for instance, pirates decks were probably dropping off quite a bit. Uh, I know I'm parking on, on pirates, but you know, and like other like random stuff that's not particularly good. And then the like better decks, uh, the uh, Aphelios was almost 50% of top 32. Yeah. 14 of 32. And it was probably brought by like, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 players, something. Probably a lot so more you can see that, the, con- but yeah, I get you. Well, it's below pirates and pirates was like around 100, 120. So. Oh, damn. We don't know what the exact number was. Uh, I need to go. We need to go. I think find, it was very overrepresented in the um, high masters players. Yeah, it's that's the other thing that came up on the podcast. Um, is that like the quality of players playing these decks probably a little bit skewed, also? Maybe right. Someone who doesn't feel as prepared jams pirates, where someone that really puts in the reps and feels. Like they have an edge, plays a Phaleos, sure, yeah, yeah. Like Kevers never bringing pirates, right? And if he did bring pirates, well, he pro- they'd probably have a much better, you know, he'd be lifting up that win percentage, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, so things like that are another thing to take into consideration. Um, because I've noticed that. I don't, do you ever notice that? I've noticed in the, in the last few seasonals, as I get to those last rounds, especially the ninth round, the ninth round, which has been a bitch for me, every time I'm basically playing in someone that has like the standard good decks or like is playing like two out of three of them. Or like maybe some other very good decks, which yeah. is like not to be, you know, which isn't surprising. Yeah, um, maybe. I just <clears> run <throat> into aggro the first like three rounds. <laughs> yeah, first three rounds is weird, and then like middle rounds can get you like kind of tricky. But then like the six, six onwards though, I feel is like a lot of like tried and true stuff. And um, yeah, we were talking about this, you know, one of my was talking about how he likes to win the matchup before he even plays, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things I love. That's like how I always got edges in Magic. I was like, this deck is just much better than your deck. Like I could play this. Like I can make all kinds of mistakes here and punt around and like I'll still just beat you because my deck just does this thing and your deck can't handle it. Um, and that's something you can get in LOR. It's just like I was gonna say it's more difficult, but I'm not even sure if it's if if it is. I think there's just not enough of us out there like brewing and like like it's so tough to make a new deck, let alone yeah. multiple new decks that are actually good into a field. There's so much work that goes into that. Like it's ridiculous, the the fine tuning and the tweaking and the figuring out the matchups and like you know and you have to do it like maybe by yourself or very, with a very small team. You don't get the hive mind. Um, yeah. It's fucking tough, and I think there's just not enough people doing stuff like that. Um, and that's why you see people like look at Raptor. Remember when Raptor was in the, the last seasonals and he was just playing all kinds of nonsense that none of us had even like like Bono, uh, who's the six drop chick that freezes things? Sejuani. Sejuani. It's like Mono Sejuani. Like Sijuani, like Feliord Ionia, Sijuani, and stuff, and just Zoo. making shit up. Rank, like, Ruben Zoo does it all the time. With like random stuff he just, just stuff made. he throws together. Because, yeah. like, and, and we've seen, and we've figured this out now that, like, that's a way to climb the ladder, right? Do something very powerful that people don't know what the fuck is going on. Because you mm-hmm. just get a bunch of extra points from that. Because they just, they'll make yeah. one misplay and, like, Oop, game's over because you fucking tapped out here or whatever. Um, so, basically, long, long story short, I want to move in that direction that's not i'm not like a i've never been a good deck builder or anything but i i want to at least be like you know thralls for instance is a you know an example things that are a little bit off meta and uh trying to like make them the best i can and try to like get really good at them um 
fucking Grandpa Roji is a good example. Uh, yeah, or Cameron, did he, he top right? thirty two? Like, did he? I don't know. I, I only know that did. a lot of our boys made it, and that's that's boom. All yep, yeah, I know what I and Kevin. Yeah, let's see. And then who else played? Push B, me, Haneke. 50%. 50% of the team in top 32. Not bad. And I'm just dragging the fuck out of that stat, too. You don't even have to put me on there. That's like, I'm literally, I'm the only one without a top 32. Oh, Jason, did I say Jason Sensational? Uh, he top 32, the first one. Yeah, yeah, I just meant that actually played. Anyways, whatever, close to fucking 50%. Um, peeps cracked. So good. Shout out those guys. Fingers crossed. I hope they do well. Um, yeah, I want one of them to win it, obviously. They deserve it. Like, yeah. all three of them. Could be, like, on any given day, all three of them, any of the three of them could be the best player on the server. On any given day. Yeah. Totally agree. They're all very good. Um, also, since, you know, you won and Pushby won, Shelf Space is... Uh, Gotta get a... Yeah, we're gonna need a new, a new like, covered <laughs> to put all our trophies yeah, in. We need, yeah, we need, our we need more. metaphorical uh, trophies, because we don't get the Bra- any trophies. The Brazilians have also, like, started to really flex their, um, you know, they have regular tournaments, eh? They have, like, three or four tournaments uh, a week, like, every single week. And, like, I think you're starting to see that now as they crush the ladder. And they, like, now they just won their first seasonals after being super close a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, and, like, we don't, we don't have that kind of stuff. Uh, Master and Terra, I hear, host tournaments every now and then. <laughs> it's about as close Bro. as we get. Yeah, that's about as close as we get. I ch- Check this out. <clears throat> Random aside. I was like going to playrunterra.com to um to check out like when the next seasonals is. By yeah. the way, it is July the 9th, so we have like seven weeks, which is kind of dope. New cards look dope. I'm excited for it already. Yeah. Um but so I was on Player and Terra and I, like it logged me into like the uh like the Spanish version. Okay. And they have like all this cool shit over there that we don't have. Um like or it's not Spanish, sorry, the Portuguese version. Okay. Uh, and like they have like, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. So they have like the same ones that we have, and then they have this like communication tab where it's like a Discord, a forum, programs for tournaments, and like all this other extra shit. And Apex between all these tournaments and stuff. Like what's EU used to get EU Masters? Where's the love? What? What? Where's Where's the love for Canada? <laughs> Specifically just um, Canada. <laughs> speaking of, yeah, so let's go. And then let's touch on the, yeah, just Canada. Um, and then speaking on seasonals and stuff, bro, what is going on with these? Like, I guess, I think technically the NA, the NA thing where everyone dropped in round three, that was a, a riot wide thing. I think yeah. that was different than what happened in APAC. Oh. So had, had that not happened, I think the NA one actually would have been fine. Because hmm. I think that was just okay. a, that was a that was a riot thing. That wasn't a, a League like of Legends all games. thing. Or, or Legends of Runeterra. All games. Yeah. Valorant. Wow. Uh TFT. Like, yeah, other all the other games were having it was like a, their servers were went down. Yeah. Um not mine was fine. Mine never disconnected, so it was only for some people. Uh so America's might have been fine. And then EU, I think, was also okay. I think it went off without a hitch. So maybe it's just APAC. Um, because what I was getting at is like, what if this keeps happening? Because it has, it yeah, has in the, it past. Has the past, but it's, yeah. it hasn't been as bad though, right? It was delays, I think, mostly. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's mostly I, those long ass delays. I had to drop because of one of them. At I remember. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It infuriates me to think about. It infuriates me to think that you would plan a date on seasonals day as a sacred day of rest. It's supposed to be like two hours <laughs> after. <laughs> And it was really like it. It was tickets to something. We can't like change it. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, that's so funny. Sitting yeah. at but- sitting at like a dinner with my date and her friends, and I'm just like, <laughs> just it's like so, I'm so sorry, but yeah, I'm so sorry about this. I'm so, yeah. I'm just, I'm that, so that's sorry. That's exactly just, what it was like. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, were, I'm, did I'm, you try and did you try and include them? Because you love to talk out loud. Were you trying to be like, okay, so like, see, I'm gonna attack him here. He made a mistake by playing this guy over here. Now I'm gonna trick him by countering this. And they're like, uh huh. They would ask, right? They'd be like, well, how are you doing? And I would be like, okay. How's it going? So they banned Pantheon, right? <laughs> <laughs> Those fools. Yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> they left up my Zoe uh, or whatever. Yeah. But 
Oh, that was infuriating. Um, the only thing I was really like, I was sad about possibly losing the world's points, which didn't end up happening. Um, but I knew I was like, Oh um, yeah. Either black boss Speaking or whatever which, I was going. A bone to pick with you, sir. Do you remember when I was like, Hey Bay, is 600. Actually, I don't know if I asked you for the Ari Kennan portion, but I ran, I ran my fucking rating to like 600 and something for Ari Kennan season. And then I was yeah. like, I was like, okay, I'm good. Camp out. And it's like, yeah. nope, everyone went to a fucking thousand. So then yeah. this time I ran it up to like 600 or something with like two months left until fucking Zizel. So I was like, hey, babe, what should I do now? And you're like, I think you just have to keep playing. You got to keep going. No stopping. So then I kept playing and just fucking bounced around to give a fuck. And then by the end of the season, I would have been like top 30 still. I could have fucking believe. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm joking. I don't have a bone to pick. Um, yeah, but no. it's yeah, like, no. you don't know. Yeah, yeah you yeah. literally don't know. Uh, but like, I feel like I got, fu- that was another reason I wasn't really into the seasonals. I was kind of chapped about that. Um, man, like something I'm going to really like, I, I say this all the time, but like, I'm really going to treat by rating and ladder climbing more like a fucking job more like uh like i'm in a poker tournament or something yes, you know you want to just, like, you just call here i'll you know, call yeah. here you like, do, I'll you just do that in a flat, cash game because who cares around tournament it screws you later right yeah and that's yeah, how you can be doing treated. that shit yeah mm-hmm. um and yeah and really just take it much more seriously um and, and this is i think this is the key <clears throat> There are times when I feel like I have an edge, like on the meta, Play and yep. I'm just and I'm just boop, 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 just fucking printing LP. And then as soon as the meta, I can tell when the meta starts to shift. Right, I'm running into these people with like decks that are good into mine, strategies that are getting good into mine more and more often. Um, then it's like time to sit and like go onto the Smurf and start trying other shit out and trying to like get an edge on the meta again. And then once you again feel confident into like most of the meta then you can go climb if you have to or whatever. Yeah. I think that's the way to go. Or you can just be like Kevra. I don't know how he fucking does it sometimes, man. He's insane. But like fucking animal. Kevra plays very deliberately all the time. No, he doesn't. Mm-hmm. But he like, he just doesn't play for long periods, though. When, like, yeah, no, but you know what I'm I mean? saying, like, no, he doesn't play all the time. When Kevra plays, every single time when Kevra's he plays, in a game, he takes it very seriously. Yes. Every game. No matter what. Yes. I, yeah. you, most people don't do that. La, 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 la. Exactly. Yeah. I'm on the phone. I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm reading a book on my other monitor. I'm recording for email. YouTube, right? Yeah, exactly. He doesn't do that. And that's why. I yeah. think M-Tuck's the same way. <clears throat> yeah, dude, M-Tuck's a fucking animal. He's like had the yeah. second most Always games played of anyone. Um, I can't even imagine. I'm trying to think of him at work. Just like go to the bathroom real quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, get the yep. quick game in. Uh-huh. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's that's so because that that eats into your win percentage like a mother when you do that. Mm-hmm. And like any okay, loss, real- like drops you a million LP. Um, yeah. Did want to say the only yeah like the, what I was saying before. The only thing I'm upset about is that um I knew that either what am I or Black Boss was going to top thirty two, and I would no longer be tied for most top thirty twos in the world. I knew that was going to happen. So congratulations, what am I? Um, well deserved, well deserved. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna be fighting back for that one. Um, yeah. And then if, if any of you wanted to see us talk about the new cards, uh, that's gonna be next week. That way, we have a more holistic view. We'll have them all. Yep, we'll have them all. We will have played it. Which uh, they will have played it. Yeah, which is also we are getting. I don't know if you saw the email, but we are getting early access to the cards now on Monday. Uh, but we're not allowed to release anything we can't until stream it or anything. Yeah. No, we can't release until Tuesday. But what we'll do is we'll, if we can anyway, is like record some content so that when the embargo lifts on Tuesday, bam, we can be like, here's all our thoughts. Here's us playing the decks. Here's what we think is working, what's not working. And then we'll do some like streaming and stuff too, yeah, as per usual. Good. All right. Cool. Uh, I think I'm about good for today. Ready for yeah. a nice long one next week where we talk about all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Me too. I'm going away this weekend. Just randomly, no one really cares. But it's a long weekend here in Canada and I'm going to go tubing. With the family, yeah. just go fucking float. Yeah, we're going out to the lake and like go play at the beach and do some tubing, and, like some drinks and stuff. Good times. Sounds awesome. I wish you yeah, so a very merry weekend. I'm looking forward to go do that. Unplug, refresh, come back, yeah. pan on some content. 
Exactly. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. And uh, good luck to all our boys in Top 32. See you guys again next week. Peace.